In the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand. And we will understand only what we are taught. Hi, I'm Avan Antia. More simply said, education and knowledge imbibed into our emotional framework will drive our actions. The ocean provides a lot of emotional power, a sense of wonder, the beauty and color of a coral reef. In the 1960s, with the underwater explorer Jacques Cousteau, with his books and films, brought the ocean into public imagination. Today, the internet and the cinema, you joining us over the internet, and this recreational diving, coastal tourism, makes the ocean accessible to millions of us. And hardly anyone is untouched by the beauty it has to offer. So this emotive power has been harnessed for conservation. Just think of the enormous empathy that humans bring towards whales and dolphins. Using this, and with public campaigns, whale populations that were under threat of extinction were placed under protection with international moratoriums on commercial whaling. And many populations, but not all, are now on the increase. But emotional triggering is not enough. Knowledge and understanding of the marine environment also provides a powerful tool for action. Let me give you an example. Just a few kilometers from where I'm sitting, the river mouth brings in huge load of nutrients from agricultural runoff. Yet here, the water's clear and clean. This enormous cleaning service, as we call it, is given free of charge from the bacteria and organisms in the muddy water bottom of the river mouth. You too, at your coastline, are enjoying this free service. Now, it's hard to develop personal bond to seabed bacteria. We need awareness and knowledge of the interconnectedness of land and ocean and how impacts, how humans impact the system. In this case, knowledge and solution options must reach decision makers and lead to better regulation and management. So we see literacy should involve both emotions and knowledge. Literacy at all levels is a global goal, but why the ocean? I think there's several reasons. The ocean is less a part of general knowledge than terrestrial systems. In a recent poll, European citizens were asked what they thought of when they considered climate change and its impact on the seas and coasts. Many mentioned the sea level rise and erosion, but look at this, don't know scored high on the list. It's this that ocean literacy must seek to change. Another reason is that people don't live in the ocean or experience it firsthand as we do land systems. We can't breathe seawater with us less likely to be spokespersons for its protection. And thirdly, the impact of human activity on the ocean is accelerating alarmingly. And the window of opportunity for action to preserve the ocean function within acceptable boundaries is narrowing. So we need to act now to avoid severe impacts for our generation and the next. So how to improve ocean literacy? A good place to start is with children who are innately curious and easily fascinated by the ocean. Programs that bring ocean literacy into schools captivate the children, but also teachers, educators, and their parents. For example, teaching food webs begs the comparison of cows with copepods, which is ultimately why tuna high up the marine food chain cannot be harvested in large amounts. So should we eat tuna? Understanding the marine food web will allow one to figure it out oneself. At our university, scientists have created a textbook that helps school teachers to bring ocean science into schools. And teacher training has become an important aspect of ocean literacy. So these children don't just learn about the ocean, but also about the way knowledge is generated through exploration and careful scientific method. And lastly, these children will take the fascination of the ocean with them, hopefully making their generation even better advocates of sustainable ocean development. Information and knowledge can't always substitute for personal experience. Let's take plastic pollution. Plastic pollution has been widely covered in the media, 
we have know about the white garbage dumps in the ocean and the litter on the seafloor. But having widespread public initiatives for coastal cleanup brings people in contact with the garbage that results from our careless lifestyles. So an ocean problem is linked to individual behavior. Public information campaigns embed ocean issues in the public mind. Another newer form of ocean literacy is through what we call citizen science. So scientists are now tapping into the power of the public as citizen scientists who can be involved in the generation of data at a scale that would otherwise be unobtainable. So for observations of species such as whales or sharks or jellyfish, hobby amateur observers can plug their data into the scientific community. Literacy must play a role in transforming individual behavior and influencing political decisions leading to good governance. This is already happening. Take, for example, public campaigns on sustainable fisheries that are pushing towards better, better management of fish stocks. The Marine Stewardship Council certificate awarded to products from sustainable fisheries allows consumers to make an active choice on what they eat and puts pressure on the industry to act on their behalf by supporting responsible fisheries. This is a great example and many others will follow. Nations too lobby for ocean issues, driven partly by the low-lying states who are threatened by sea level rise. The United Nations in September 2015 for the first time singled out ocean sustainability as a global sustainable development goal. We need now to work actively to making this goal into reality by increasing literacy and increasing action to protect the oceans and to make good ocean management the best option for humans, for our health, safety, societal well-being, but also for our economies and for a just distribution of resources. Recently, I saw a sticker with a very apt message. There is no planet B. How true. So let's take a moment to admire the blue planet we inhabit. In the words of astronomer Carl Sagan, how inappropriate to call this planet Earth when quite clearly it is ocean. So join us scientists and citizens around the world in learning about, embracing and protecting the oceans that cover 70% of our planet. It's the only one we have.